Hey, Jay White here in the Jay White Creations Workshop. I just want to make a quick video about what I've been working on all winter here. This is my milling machine, and no matter what I'm building uh, or making, this thing gets involved in one way or another, whether it's metal or wood or milling or drilling or cutting, whatever. I go to this thing all the time. So uh, the idea is that it's got this cutter on it. You know, it looks like a drill bit, but it's a cutter, and you can cut on the side or on the bottom of it, and it makes a really nice finish on metal, and I use it on wood all the time, too. And uh, it's also got this table on it that moves around just like an Etch-a-Sketch. It's got these two cranks. One goes one way, and the other goes the other way. And on these cranks, you've got these very accurate increments that I can turn to. These are thousandths of an inch, and I can really bring it into a, a very accurate position. And then I can, on the table, I can hold a piece of metal in a vise, or in this case, I have a rotary table set on there right now. And uh, it's it's great. It's really accurate. But when you need to move uh, the table something like two inches, it you got to turn the crank 32 turns. And then if you got to turn to a, a certain measurement, like 2.136, you got to you you got to turn to to here to 62.5 where it resets to zero and then do all your math adding 62 and a half over and over and it's really confusing and I screw it up all the time especially if you have multiple pieces to make it, it just it gets frustrating screwing it up all the time so what I've been doing is trying to do a CNC conversion to this but I've been doing really on the cheap uh, I've been adding these motors here uh, these are stepper motors and they turn the cranks very accurately. Instead of just getting, getting electricity and spinning around, they get pulses of electricity and they turn just one step at a time for each pulse. And so one revolution of the motor is 400 pulses. So you can really just get so accurate on where it turns and I can turn these dials right to exactly the right measurement every time. And so Usually a uh, system like this is controlled by a computer, but what I've done is just uh, programmed a $12 Arduino, or well it's an Arduino clone, but it cost me 12 bucks, and uh, that takes all the inputs like these joysticks right here, which are the joysticks just like out of a game controller, and inside here is the Arduino under all this electric spaghetti, that, that blue chip right down in there. That's the Arduino, and it's taking all the inputs and sending them out through these nine wires to the motors, and then that comes out the back, and then I, I got a nice plug wired up, and I just got I got to finish wrapping these in this this nice black stuff. I like that, but um, but so the best part about this is I got it hooked up to my cell phone through Bluetooth. And my cell phone sits right there. I'll show you how this works and. Actually, inside here, you can see back, right back in there. That's the Bluetooth module. It costs five bucks because it's the same Bluetooth module. It's in every cell phone in the world, basically. And they're just stamping them out so cheap now. So, so that all sits inside the box. My cell phone sits right here. You can see I'm already, I'm already connected. Basically, this makes a serial link between the Arduino and my cell phone. It's just sending one byte of data at a time, so that means one ASCII character off your keyboard, like one letter or one number. Uh, it's not sending anything like like 125, you know, or 0 0.25, 125. It's uh, it, like it accepts it as 125, and then I have to tell it things like uh, take that one amount, multiply it by 10, and then add the next amount coming in, and then you have to build the number on the other side. It's it's a little rough, but I plan on writing an app in the future that's going to make it real user friendly and real nice. But basically, right now you can see it says power feed. It tells me my my uh, speed. That's uh, an eighth of an inch per second that it'll travel right now. If I hit the right button on the right joystick, it'll decrement that speed by one half every time. And uh, here you can see put it up to quarter inch per second and here you can see the, the motor on the left is turning the crank on the right and, and I'm just moving the joystick so I got left right I got up and down 
And this is a system that you can buy just a power feed. You know, it'll turn these cranks for you, and it won't keep track of the won't keep track of the travel or anything like that. But then the next part of this is that you can see this is mode two, move and record. It's got zero moves in memory. But anyways, here I can just say I want to go left by hitting the joystick to the left. It'll ask me for the distance. And then I could say, let's go 0.25. Then it'll ask me for my speed. And let's say I want to go 120 thousandths per second. And then as soon as I hit send, It'll just move exactly a quarter inch. I'll stop. It's beautiful. And uh, never never screws up as long as I don't type it wrong. And then the next part of this is I can hit the right button. And then it'll say it has recorded, or the recording has started. And it also gives me all my uh, coordinates there to keep track of where I've, where I've gone. So now I can say, let's. Let's go down. I want to go 0.1 at 100 thousandths per second. You can hear it moving there. And then let's go to the left. 0.1 at 100. And then we'll turn the rotary table. Uh, whoops. Let's turn it 30 degrees at 20 degrees per second. All right, let's see. It's it's keeping track of how many moves I have in there and my coordinates still. Uh, let's let's move it back to the right. Point one at 100. And we'll move it back up 0.1 at 100. So now I can hit the right button again. It stops recording. And I can hit the left button. Change the mode to autonomous mode. And it tells me I have a routine saved in memory of five modes, or five moves. Uh, I can either press select to run this one time or a number of repetitions. So here, uh, check it out. Uh, as soon as you focus in, I just hit select, and it'll repeat those five moves again. And it stops when it's done. Or I can come back over here. It's asking me for a number of repetitions, and I can tell it I want to do this three times. And as soon as I hit send, it's on its way again. And it's done. So let me chuck up some metal and uh, let me show you how useful this can be. Okay, so I got a little scrap piece of aluminum chucked up here in the rotary table. Uh, I got the, this little stepper motor clamped to the side of it just using another scrap piece of aluminum that just happened to have two holes drilled in the right spot. Just kind of wanted to see if it worked, but in the future I plan on making a nice bracket. This will be able to fit onto the rotary table or I can take it off and continue to use it manually. So. I'm going to use my power feed to bring this bit into position here. Alright, just about kissing it. Out of range. Okay. I'm gonna go over here and start programming. So I'm gonna 
speed up just a little bit. Okay, I'm not recording. Recording started. Okay, the first move I want to make, I'm going to bring it down. Let's go 0 0.05 of an inch. Let's go down at 200 thousandths per second. And and it dropped. Okay, now we'll start making a cut to the left and we'll make it uh, let's just go a half an inch. And we'll go at 100 thousandths per second. And she's off. Making a cut all by itself. Okay. Now it's finished. Now I can bring it back. Right. Go back. Point five to where we were. And go a little faster since the cut's been made. And we'll come back up. That point zero five we started with. Do that at 252 because the cut's been made. And we're off. Okay. Now we're going to spin the rotary table. Uh, let's go 60 degrees. And we'll go at 20 degrees per second because we're not making a cut. Alright. So that's pretty much the routine. It's reset right now. So now I can say stop recording. We're in autonomous mode. We have five moves. And we've already done one at 60 degrees. So let's run this five more times. Or rather, four more times. And that will complete the circle. Oh, that's the one I started with. Oh, I went the wrong direction. That's all right, I'll add a couple of passes and I'll still finish it up. Two more passes. Finish that hexagon. So, so two and swim. Perfect little hexagon there. I'll take that out. Pretty 
Pretty nice. Real happy with this thing. I, uh, shows you how, how useful it can be in repetitious motions. And uh, uh, so if you got four slots to to cut on a piece, you know, you can just train it to do it once and then move it around and just have it keep repeating that pattern. And uh, you know, in the future, I hope to to program it to be able to move on, a, you know, to any place on the X Y coordinates and then perform a pattern that would be a little easier, a little more user friendly. And uh, I'm gonna get these wires all wrapped up. I'm gonna make brackets for all the motors that look real nice. Um, I just got. Uh, this one's not hooked up yet. I just got the the belt that is long enough. Uh, it's right here. That's gonna go right right on the side here. I've got this piece made up. I can find it. This is. I'm gonna replace this piece with this one, and that's going to give me just enough room for one of these GT2 belt pulleys to sit in between the wheel and the block and then I, I can still use the cranks when I need to. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta also program that. I gotta figure out how to how to disable these motors so that I can still just turn the cranks if I need to. But uh, you know, still got a lot of work to do but uh, I hope to make another video when it's a little more complete and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks.